What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So I thought that I'd make a video just showing you how to create some uh, basic primitive shapes. So everything from cones to egg shapes to torus shapes to spheres. So just things like that in SketchUp because you do have to think about them and kind of work around them a little bit in order to create those different objects. So before I get started, I do want to thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So thank you very much to Jens Kuhn. Barbara and Trent Barrow. So Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon at the link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one thing SketchUp really doesn't have is built-in ability to create different primitive shapes. So it has kind of the 2D shapes and then you can extrude and all of that, but you have to kind of find some workarounds to create some of these primitive shapes. And once you kind of get used to this, it's not really hard to do. Um, I do it all the time without thinking about it um, within my models, but when you first start figuring it out, it can be a little bit challenging. So I wanted to go through just a couple different kinds of shapes that you can create in SketchUp. So the first is a cone, and so if I was going to create a cone, what I would do is I would use the circle tool to create a circle, and then I would just draw a line up, and I would basically create a triangle standing up along this face and then all you would do is you would just select this face by clicking on it you would go over to the follow me tool and you just click on this face to extrude this in a circle to create your cone so a four-sided pyramid is something that I would create by drawing a square so let's say I drew a two foot by two foot box using the rectangle tool which you can activate using the R key and then what I would do is I would just kinda inference to the center of this shape. So what I do is I move, I activate the line tool and then I'll just move my mouse over this point and then over this point and just hesitate at both of those and you can see how I get this little inference in here that shows me where the center point is. And then I would just draw a line up and then I would draw two lines from this point to these two edges to create this face and then I would just select the face I would activate the rotate tool in copy mode. So in this case, I would select this face, I would tap the Q key, and then I would lock this to the blue axis by tapping the up button. And then I would just set my center point, click on this edge, tap the control key to activate copy mode, and then I would type in times three and hit the enter key. And what that'll do is that'll create three copies around the edge of this so that I have this pyramid. And one thing to note is you could also adjust the size of this either by using the scale tool or by coming in here and selecting the base of this pyramid and moving it up and down. And so we would do something similar to create like a diamond or a jewel shape. So let's say for example that I wanted to create a jewel shape with eight sides. What I would do is I would activate the circle tool by tapping the C key. And then I would type in the number of sides that I want. You can see how it's asking for that in the lower right hand corner. So in this case, let's say I had eight sides. I would type in eight and hit the enter key. Let's make it six and hit the enter key. So that would let me draw a six sided shape. And then I would do the same thing where I would draw a line straight down. And then I would create a face right here. I would double click, activate the rotate tool, and do the same thing where I make a copy around the edge of this. Only this time I would type in times five. Instead of times three and I would hit the enter key. That would create five copies around this uh, shape. And then what I would do is I would push pull this edge up. I would select this face and I would use the I would use the scale tool in uniform scale mode. So what I did is I push pulled this face up using the push pull tool. And then I double clicked on it. I activated the scale tool and now I'm going to hold the control key. So when I hold the control key, what this does is this scales this about the center. And then I'm just going to click and drag. And so you can see how that basically makes it so I can make this kind of tapered top space. And you can do the same thing where you could move this up and down. So probably what you would have to do is tap the up key 
on your keyboard to lock this to the blue axis, but you can see how you can move that up and down in order to adjust the way the top of this looks. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of this and right click and select the option for reverse faces. So with our pyramid, with our four-sided pyramid, if I wanted to create um, if I wanted to create a shape where the pyramid is on both sides, what I would do is I would use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm just going to click and drag across this to select it, tap the M key, click on this point, corner point, and then I'm going to tap the control key to put this in copy mode. So that gives me one copy of this. And then what I could do is I could use the move tool in copy mode to create a second copy down below. So same thing tap the M key, click on this corner, tap the control key to activate copy mode. And then you can either right click and do a flip along the blue direction, or you could use the scale tool on this to flip this in place as well. And then you would just move these two pieces back together in order to create this shape. So the next shape I want to create is a torus. And a torus is basically a circle that's kind of extruded in another circle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to activate the circle tool. I'm going to set this back to 24 sides. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a circle. And I'm going to delete out the face. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another circle along this edge. And what's going to make this important is what you want to do is you want to activate the circle tool and then tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. When you lock this to the green axis, then no matter where you move your mouse, this stays on the green axis. So tap that left arrow key. And then all you're going to do is draw a circle, click on this line to select it as a path, and then activate the follow me tool, and click on this edge to extrude this in a circle. So you can see how that torus is really easy to make. And if you wanted to, you could also use the scale tool to adjust how this looks. So you could make this taller or shorter, just depending on what kind of shape you want to create using the scale tool. So now let's talk about creating a dome. So a dome in SketchUp's mind is basically, so in this case, the way that we would create a dome is we would draw a circle. All right, so once you've drawn your circle, what I would do is I would create an arc all the way across this face. So tap, tap the A key to activate the arc tool, click on these two points, and then move your mouse up. And it may help you to tap the up key to lock this to this point. So this will allow you to create how tall you want your dome to be. So in this case, I'm going to lock this to the half circle. So I think a lot of people get hung up on trying to do this with this whole dome face like this. You don't want to do that because you can't get this full face um, or this full path quite the way that you want it to be. Instead what you would do is you would draw a line straight down like this and then you'd erase out this extra. Then you can click on this circle and use the entire thing to extrude this into a dome. So I'm going to click on this face, activate the follow me tool, and then I'm going to click on this edge or this other face. And what that did is that extruded this along a circle just like this. So now you have a dome shape in here. And so the next shape I want to create, we can actually use this dome. And we'll do the same thing that we did for this shape over here. So we'll make a copy of this straight down, flip it in place, or use the flip along option, either way. And then you just move these two back together. So I would just uh, inference this back on the blue axis, hold the shift key, and then move this up. And so now you could select just this face by clicking on it, activate the scale tool, and you can click and drag this down in order to create this egg shape. And one thing you could do if you wanted to is you could select this geometry, right click on it, and hide it to make this a more smooth shape. So it's still in here as two separate faces, but you've hidden the borderline between the two of them. So that's how you can create an egg shape. A sphere is fairly simple. You just create a pair of circles. So in this case, I would draw a circle on the blue axis like this. And then I would move my mouse and find the center point of this. And I would tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. So what I want is I want this circle to stand up. And you could do it on the red axis as well. You just basically need a circle that's perpendicular to your first circle. And it doesn't matter how big that is. You can just draw that circle out, click once on it to select the face, and then use the follow me tool 
to extrude this face in a circle. You can see how that gives you a perfect sphere. Then all you have to do is just right click on this to reverse your faces. You do have to be a bit careful because this circle in here that we were using before is still in there. So a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll either kind of move this out of the way using the move tool or I'll just right click and I'll hide it and I'll delete out this extra circle and then I'll do an unhide last from your edit menu. So, and then if you wanted to, you could also use the move tool to adjust the way this sphere looks, or you could also use the scale tool to adjust the way this sphere looks. And so basically what you would do in this case is you would just select it, you'd activate the scale tool, and then you could click and drag in order to do whatever you want to this shape. So you can adjust different shapes in the same way using the scale tool. And then one kind of bonus tip is there's actually an extension that you can use in the extension warehouse to do this. So you just go into the extension warehouse. So that is under window extension warehouse. And then you just look for an extension called shapes. And so shapes is an extension that SketchUp has released that allows you to create different shapes in SketchUp. So it's this first option right here. And it basically allows you to create most of these different shapes. So all you have to do is install that in your SketchUp and that'll show up in your draw menu. So you can come in here and let's say you wanted to create a torus, it would let you set the different options for that torus and then you would just click OK and that would place that in your model. So that's an easy kind of workaround way to do this as well. I actually almost find it easier to just do these in place just because I don't have to go back to my origin point and find it and move it around. I can just do this in place. It's basically doing the same thing, but if you'd rather have that in a, in a plug-in format, you can definitely do it that way as well. So that's how you can create 10 different primitive type shapes in SketchUp. I'll leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is this helpful to you? Did you know you could do all of this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.